teaching spiritual formation from a Pentecostal perspective. Spiritual formation from a Pentecostal perspective, which means spiritual formation and Holy Spirit. So when we talk about from a Pentecostal perspective, we must engage Holy Spirit to be the agent, if you will, of our spiritual formation. So it's more than the word, the Bible. It's more than the church. It's Holy Spirit is the agent. Holy Spirit is the agent. He is the pursuer. He is the agent. He's the person that is responsible for our spiritual discernment, our spiritual enlightenment, our spiritual growth, maturity, sanctification. Holy Spirit does this in our lives. Praise God. If we invite him, if we allow him, Elder Demetrius coming up to timeline. Good morning, Union family. Good morning. God bless you. Good morning, Elizabeth Grant. I love you. Letty Watts. Uh, hey, Dr. Sonia Golden. Juanita Campbell. Let's go. Rose Austin. Laconda Mack. Come on in here. Tara Jones. Ovis. We are here doing the work and it is soul work. It is soul work. I want you uh, to be healthy in body. I want you to be strong in spirit as your soul prospers, as your soul prospers, as our soul prospers. So if you're on in the mornings with uh, Dr. Anika, uh, uh, you know that she, uh, today she dealt with uh, managing our our uh, misunderstandings when people misunderstand us. Good morning to Pastor Shannon Holmes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. That's Agent One, and there's an Agent One B someplace close. Good morning to my children. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, in moments of crises. Our sinful compulsions become very obvious in moments of crises. I got so many Bibles here. Our, our compulsions become more obvious. So misunderstanding, rejection, isolation, all of that, hurt feelings, disappointments, you didn't keep your word, all of those things, they... They, they cause our negative compulsions to be more obvious. Uh, Pastor Willa Dean, yes, spiritual formation 101. Pastor Gerald Folsom, yes, yes. Janet Rivers Richardson, good morning. Jalika Taylor, uh, Tanny, good morning. Good morning. Facebook user, good morning. Rita Swain, good morning. Ellen Newby, good morning to good Deacon, my good Deacon. Good morning, D. Dwayne Kemp. Miyoshi, let's go. I'm, I'm working so many devices, but I'm graced to do it in Jesus' name. Amen. In moments of crises, our sinful compulsions become very obvious. And so what Holy Spirit, Dr. Miyoshi and my sorrow, uh, Sylvia Spikes, Rita, yes, God bless you. Uh, come on in here, Tamara Chestnut. There's uh, the chief. Good morning, April. Good morning, uh, uh, Alan. <laughs> Good morning, my sweet baby. Hallelujah. In moments of crises, and crisis is very subjective because it really depends on your parameters and your definitions in terms of what you perceive to be a crisis. Great morning, Tamara. Great morning, Annie. Great morning, Tiffany. Great morning, my Sora Denise Wellens Glover. Great morning, Deanie. Good morning. Wadsworth, good morning, Dean Nicholson. Let's go, let's go, let's go, Eddie Wright, let's go. Ah, hey, what do you define as a crisis? I am Nia Shabazz, uh, Annette Maliante, Sharon Ross, Gloria Jean, good morning, my sister. What do you define as a crisis? So depending upon your triggers, depending upon your parameters, uh, depending upon your 
your definitions of crises. Uh, and that's very subjective. That's very subjective. And it's just like um, in a hospital, you have some patients that can tolerate pain better than others. And so you have some patients that never ask for pain meds. And then you have some patients that every three and a half hours, they hit that button. They need their pain meds because their, their level of tolerance, their level of pain is it varies from person to person. I'm saying something really, really powerful here. And so Deidre, God bless you. Uh, John Andrew, God bless you. <laughs> Thanks for nothing. I know, I know becoming unoffendable, living an unoffendable life. And so it just depends upon your reactionary energy, what your compulsions are, what you react to. And so everybody reacts differently. Some people react to tone in the voice. Some people react to words. Some people react to how it made them feel. Uh, some people react to the actual action or the violation. Some people don't react at all. They internalize, they brood, uh, they walk away, they internalize, they incubate. And so they operate very differently. Some people shut down and become very bitter, become very, very um, um, uh, uh, closed to relationships. Uh, good morning, Jamaica. Good morning, Mama Erica. Good morning, Mary Milton, Spencer, Glennis, Duncan. Let's go. Me yes, Miyoshi Dasi. I got two Miyoshis. Deborah Sharp. Let's go. And so, uh, Benina, good morning. Yes, yes, Dr. Martha. Uh, Evangelist Priscilla coming up the timeline. Parthenia Stratford, let's go. Um, so depending upon your own reactionary energy, uh, depending upon what your coping strategies are, depending. Uh, so very subjective, the word crises. What is your level of crises? However, the thing I want us to get, Anita, the thing I want us to get, Sunshine, the thing I want us to get is that it doesn't matter what your threshold is, what your baseline is, your most negative self is revealed. And I'm going to say it like this. Good morning, Houston. Good morning. Good morning, Charlene. Good morning. What I want to say, however, is it shows the area where Holy Spirit is not working. It shows the area where Holy Spirit does not have access. It shows the area of yourself where Holy Spirit needs more work, needs more work in that area. Living the unoffendable life is doable, folks. It's totally doable. However, you're going to have to engage a Pentecostal perspective. It cannot be done by hard work. It's not done because you will it to be done. Now watch this. It's not even done because of, of prayer. It's not even done because you are faithful in church. Ah, my God, my God, my God. I'm telling you now. Woo, 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 woo. Woo. I'm telling you right now that it's going to take you engaging Holy Spirit. And when, when those areas, when your reactionary energy, your compulsions, uh, your coping strategies are magnified, under the words and under the light of Holy Spirit, you will see areas where, where offense is just waiting to overtake you, where offense is just waiting to come in and do uh, the wrong stuff. You're going to see it. You're going to see it in your life. You're going to see it in your, in your, in your journey with others. So, so being offended, it's, it's kind of like it just, it, it, it's a trigger, it's a reaction, but you can manage the trigger with the help of Holy Spirit. So now you also have to be alert to um, demonic activity. You have to be alert to demonic involvement. You must be alerted 
So, okay, that wasn't me. That was, all right, I got, I got some other influence going on here. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so uh, when, when we deal with Holy Spirit, and I see Lakanda says Holy Spirit is to lead and guide us, but it can't lead and guide us when too much of our flesh is on board. That is true. That is true. And your flesh are your emotions. I know we always think about the body, but what about them emotions? That's your flesh too. <laughs> Good morning, Dr. Dean. Come on, come on now. Come on. Whoa, John Royce said, we always think about the flesh as in, and I'm just clarifying it. That's not what she said, but I want to define flesh, that the flesh are your emotions as well. So, let me ask you a question. Do you know offense is a sin? Do you know that? Do you know being offended is sinful? It is displeasing to God. Good morning, Mama Pearl. <laughs> Woo! And so being offended and being and, and offending others, do we know that God despises that? Whew. Hallelujah. Come on, Patty. <laughs> Come on, Maria. <laughs> Patty said, help me with my unbelief. <laughs> I love y'all. Yay, Maria James. Come on here. Yes. So yes, offense. Do you know that it is a sin for you to be offended? Do you know that? I don't think we know that. I don't think we internalize the definition of sin because many of us only think of sin in the physical we don't think of sin in the emotional. Let me get my little hand. We don't think of regeneration of our emotions. A lot of us put a lot of time in being a, being a physical, moral, uh, but holy. But we don't deal with emotional holiness. Woo! -wee! We don't deal with emotional holiness. We don't deal with emotional purity. We don't deal with emotional purity. So we, we know that physically we should be pure. Physically we should be pure. We know, okay, I'm not supposed to do that, drink that, eat that, be that. I'm not supposed to do that. So we got that. But we have not dealt with emotional purity. We have not dealt with emotional sanctification. Come on in, Vanita, you right on time. We haven't dealt with that, Maria. We have not dealt with that. Woo, somebody write that down. Emotional holiness. Woo, ooh, ooh, ooh. this is good right there. Emotional holiness. When was the last time that you heard a sermon about being emotionally pure? Being emotionally pure, being emotionally pure. Come on now. <laughs> being emotionally pure. Write that down. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so when we say, okay, my flesh, my flesh, my flesh, include those emotions in that. My flesh. <laughs> The rolling eyes, the point in your neck. Come on here. Uh, point you rolling. Yes, yes. Snap your fingers. Whoa, what? Slam doors. Walk off. <laughs> Maria said, I, whoo, whoo, I didn't know. Hey, God, those emotions, they all over everything. Emotional purity, emotional holiness. Whoa, it was the last time you heard anything about that. Am I emotionally pure? Wanda said, never ever. <laughs> never ever. Emotional purity. Emotional wholeness. Emotional holiness. Emotional purity. We say, my flesh, my flesh, my flesh out of control. My flesh out of control. You talking about what? Do you, are you including your emotions in that? So here's my hand. Can you see it? All right, there it is. Look at that. The areas of spiritual formation, physical, intellectual, emotional, social, and moral. 
Do you see that? <laughs> all of this got to be pure. All of this. So when we talk about sanctification, we're talking about sanctification of the physical, the intellectual, the emotional, the social, and the moral. <laughs> Woo! Somebody cut me off. Come on here. Emotional purity. Yes. Yes. Even when someone driving and someone cuts us off and we look at it with that evil eye. Woo! Darlene Thumbin, good morning. God bless you. Sandra Robinson, this is spiritual formation from a Pentecostal perspective. Engaging Holy Spirit. Woo! All I have, I offer thee, oh God. Hallelujah. All I am and all I ever hope to be, God, I give it all to you. So we must become very, very aware of our own emotions and our actions, our responses, our reactionary energy, our compulsions, our coping strategies. Woo! <laughs> Come on, Kemp. Let's go. Let's go. Woo! Monica said, I need help. Thank God you got a helper. You have the advantage himself. Woo! Look at this, Maria. Thank you, baby. That's all I've known. I just prayed about my flesh. Now I will put emotional purity in my prayers. Yes. Come on. Help us today, God. Hallelujah. Woo. And it's, it's so important that we know and recognize uh, that these emotions have to be submitted to the Holy Spirit as well. I was reading this from Matthew 16, where, and we're going to look at that. Let's look at that for just a moment. We're going to run over to Matthew 11. But look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. Matthew um, chapter 16. Hallelujah. Look at Matthew chapter number 16 and verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea, Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? The son of man. They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Verse 15. But what about you? He asked, what do you say? Who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter and on this rock, the revelation, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail, but I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. You see that? Now, jump down to verse 21. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, that he must be killed. And on the third day, he must be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Look at this. <laughs> never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Now watch this in verse 23. And Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Wow. Same chapter, same Peter. <laughs> same chapter same, same Peter watch this same chapter chapter 16 the revelation of God the revelation of God the revelation of God Opalinia. God bless you the, the, the revelation of God look at this the revelation of God is I'm going you are you are the Christ you are the son of the living God and just a few moments after that Peter takes Jesus aside and begins to reprimand Jesus and says to him, this will never happen to you. 
this will never happen to you. And Jesus says, whoa, wait, I rebuke you, Satan. I rebuke you, Satan. Woo! I rebuke you, Satan. Get behind me. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God. Just that quick. Hallelujah. Just that quick. Look at this. Look at this. It feels like a flood this week, but this teaching has allowed me to actively check myself versus choosing offense. Yes, just that quick, Peter got offended. Just that quick. Woo, Rebecca and Tiffany. This makes me see more and more just how much I must surrender to Holy Spirit to deliver me from the filthy things I never even thought about. Yes, yes, yes. Whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just that quick. He got offended just that fast. He went from having the revelation of, of God, the revelation of Christ, the revelation that was given to him by Holy Spirit, that you are the Christ, son of the living God. And just that quick, he got offended. Jesus said, hold up, hold up, hold up, devil. Hold up, devil. You are stumbling block. And so sometimes, even though we think it's, it's all right to do, all right to say, all right to feel, all right to respond to certain stuff. We don't even realize that we have given the enemy opportunity to become a stumbling block. And that's what offense is. Offense is a stumbling block. Just that quick. Just that quick. Let's go back to Matthew chapter number 11. Let's go back to Matthew chapter number 11. Matthew chapter 11. Come on, let's go. Woo! Off, off fence. That's right. <laughs> Just that quick. He went from preaching in the pulpit, thou art the Christ, son of the living God, to cussing in the parking lot. <laughs> if we don't submit, come on, Kelly, if we don't submit these emotions to Holy Spirit for spiritual formation, whoa, whoa. I had a prophet tell me one time, and and it and it and it it, it you know I had to I had to look at it. I was looking at it even last night in my spirit, and he said you got to be careful that you don't that what you don't that what you correct you don't tear up, that you don't become that you don't become equally powerful in both that you you build up but you but you but you can't tear up, and I said wow okay I received that word, I have to receive that because just that quick. Just that quick. <laughs> Woo, just that fast. You can go from preaching a powerful sermon, casting out devils, and then get on the telephone on your way home talking smack. Woo, I love that off ended, off, off, speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues, and, 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 and don't even get to the restaurant good. And, and get the, to the restaurant and give the waiter and the waitress a, a, a fit with your picky, snippety self. Ain't got nothing. Just eat at home. I was sitting with a group of my, my leaders one day, and, and a couple of them just kept sending stuff back. I said, hold it. If you send anything back, I want y'all to go take me to the hotel. This is ridiculous. You all are being ridiculous. Well, it's a hair in my food. It's this, it's, it's that. It's not cooked the way I want then let's go home and eat. These people, these people that's bringing the food don't cook the food. You all are being ridiculous. And we just had had a phenomenal service. This how y'all act in public. This is awful. <laughs> With a quickness. With a quickness, change up and get offended and, and then offend others. And if your food is that good, why don't we all go to your house? These people making minimum wage and you sent them, you sent this one food back three times. We don't understand how offensive we are to others. Just that quick, you jumping and shouting. 
And then you get to the restaurant, you're showing out. You don't leave a tip. You don't do nothing. Just that quick. Peter says, thou art the Christ, son of the living God. In a few moments later, he got Jesus in the corner. Never would that happen to you. And his emotions. It was his emotions. He got offended by the revelation that I'm going to leave you. He got offended rejection. He got offended abandonment. He got offended. So he's going to correct Jesus. And Jesus had to check that devil and say, wait a minute. You are stumbling block. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, come on, somebody. <laughs> Whoa, my God. So when she said, the Holy Spirit cannot lead you because of the flesh, I want you to know that that's your emotions as well. Oh my God. Come on, Pastor William Limon. Bring, bring, bring me that, bring me that hymn up here. Holy Spirit, break me, melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh. So in that moment, there was demonic activity in Peter's emotions. Woo! <laughs> In just that, in just that, just that moment, come on here, Ivory. He checked him. He had discernment. He checked him. He said, whoa, wait, wait, wait. Ooh. Now, watch this. Watch this. In Matthew chapter 11, Jesus is instructing his 12 disciples. And when John heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples to ask him, are you the one who will come or should we expect another? Jesus replied, go back and report to John what you hear, see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is being preached to the poor. And blessed is the man who is not offended in me. Wow who is not offended in me. <laughs> John says, wait a minute, I'm in jail and you out there doing what I was doing. And so I just want to make sure that you are the Christ. And Jesus sends them back and says, I'm doing things that you did not do. I'm doing things that you didn't do because it's a different dispensation. You baptize in water, but I'm healing the sick. I'm casting out devils. The deaf hear uh, leprosy is cured and the dead are raised and I'm preaching the good news. But he says, but don't get offended. Don't get offended in me. Don't get offended with me. My God, don't get offended. Don't, don't be offended. Some of us are offended uh, when, when it's not our turn, when it's not our time, when it's not our season, particularly if you have been in a season, particularly when you have had some great, moves of some great opportunities uh sometimes when it shifts and when the cloud moves <laughs> uh you you cannot do anything with that you can't do anything about that because the cloud shifts and the cloud moves and so different people will be raised up to do things that you're not called to do and you have to be careful that you don't get offended john your gift is baptism of repentance my gift is the spirit of the Lord is upon me, has anointed me to cast out devils, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to open the prison doors, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So we have different assignments. How many times do we get offended because someone else's assignment, someone else's gifting, someone else's uh, ability offends us it's not ours and we sense this this it's better than me or they think they're doing more than me it's your perceptions see our emotions are not under holy spirit we have not submitted our emotions to holy spirit wow i'm getting my message bible <laughs> Woo! when we see others elevated when we see others when we see others, many times we we get we get in a place, we get in an emotional place 
where we are bitter, where we are hurting, where we are, we are offended. Now we, oh my God. But those patterns can be broken, folks. You, we have the most powerful God in the whole universe. And he has been kind enough to, to move us into the, the era of Holy Spirit. Your emotions are, and with 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, and we're still emotionally immature. We still do not see Holy Spirit's operation in our emotions. Uh, we don't see how the, the, the balance of Holy Spirit, how, the, how he balances us, how he moves us into a place of, of total, uh, uh, I, 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 I'm just going to use the word that the scriptures use, wholeness, W-H-O-L-E-N-E-S-S, or holiness, W-H-O-L-L-I-N-E-S. Can I do it like that? <laughs> We, we don't we don't allow that we don't allow that and so we give the devil a foothold Ephesians 4 chapter 26 27 and what is a foothold a foothold is the idea of an inhabitable space I look this up in the Greek oh my god the tapas t-o-p-o-s tapas the foothold in Ephesians 4.27 is the idea of an inhabitable space. It's the idea of an inhabitable space. So a foothold, the foothold, it says do not give the devil that kind of foothold in your life. What does that mean? An inhabitable space, a tapas. Your tapas, you have given the devil, you have given the enemy an inhabitable space. Oh my God, my God, my God. And so Paul in Ephesians chapter number four is challenging us to emotional purity. He's challenging us to emotional wholeness, emotional purity. Oh my God, my God, thank you. Thank you, Ivory. Thank you. Listen, Paul is challenging us. He said, All right, be angry, but don't use your anger as fuel for revenge. And don't stay angry. Don't go to bed angry. Don't give the devil that kind of foothold, tapas. Don't give the devil that type of inhabitable space. Oh, my shave, Gamaniosha. My God, why? Because it grieves the Holy Spirit. It grieves Holy Spirit. Do not give the devil that level of access to you. Don't give the devil that level of access. And I just sense this in my spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that some of us that are listening right now, they're going to listen later in the replay. Listen to me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're going to, you're going to have, you're going to have to do some work. Everything is not going to be done when you come to the altar. Everything is not going to be done when someone lays hands on you. You're going to have to go in and do the work. You're going to have to do the work. Ooh, come on here, Vanita. My God, my God. Ooh, come on, baby. Come on. <laughs> years. God is extending your years. Yes, ma'am. Me too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Wanda. Yes, baby. Come on, Kelly. Let's go. Let's go. Woo. <laughs> She says tighter than the middle seat on that airplane. You have given the devil an habitable space in your emotions. And you're going to have, you are 40 and 50 and 60 years old and older defending 
your eight-year-old you. I, I got to get close to the camera now. Listen to me. Your reactions are not up to your chronological age. My God. My God. You're going to have to do the work, folks. Can God use you? Yes. Yes. But you'll tear up as much as you raise up. Good God Almighty. I'm leaning in, folks. This is so deep in my spirit. Woo! You tear up as much as you raise up. Can God use me? Yes. 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 God can use you. God will use you. But you will tear up as much as you raise up. You have to do some assessment. You have to do some emotional interrogation. You have to get to the bottom. You have to question. Dr. Nika was talking about managing being misunderstood. And my question was, why does it matter to you so much that people understand you? Why does that matter so much? Are my, are my responses and my reactions, are they, they are not up to your chronological age. So there's a child, there's an inner child, there's a wounded child, there's a rejected child, there's a bruised child, there's a traumatized child that is responding in a 50-year-old person's body. Good God Almighty. Woo! Come on here, Wilson. Let's go. Let's go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I saw, and I don't know what's going on because I, I've been so busy. And I saw uh, something uh, in social media about one of my favorite uh, gospel artists. I don't know what happened. I'll have to find out from y'all. I don't know what happened. But I'm telling you now. You'll, you'll, you'll raise up, but you'll tear up. And you'll tear up as much as you raise up. Woo! Shanda Ramahanda. You, you will do a great work. Yes, God, I hear you. But you will, you will end up with nothing because of what you tore up is commiserate to what you raised up. Raise up a great family, but you tore it up. Raise up a great church, but you tow it up. You raise up a great ministry, but you tow it up. Listen to me carefully. You have got, we got to deal with this. We got to deal, we got to, got to, got to. You are 30, you are 40, you are 50, you are 60, you are 70. But your emotional responses reflect a child. An eight, a 10, a 12 year old, a five year old. God, God Almighty, Angela, quick, let's go. Woo, God, Woo, you will raise your tear up as much as you raise up. You will tear up as much as you raise up. You will bless and curse. You will, you will be an, you will be honored and vilified because you you are you raise up you sing you minister and it's amazing and then you tear it all up because of your emotions you bleed all over the people yes you bleed all over the people yes lakanda you you'll hurt the people you'll you'll do some things with the folks that you didn't intend while you're teaching while you're singing while you're ministering it's such a, a foul aroma it's such a yes yes gifted yes skill yes oh my god but it's such a foul aroma and you will raise up and tear up simultaneously and I hear this. Jesus said to John, don't get offended in me. Don't get offended because my gifts are different than yours. 
Don't get offended in me because, because, uh, because you didn't heal the sick. You didn't raise the dead. Don't get offended in me because now you are arrested, arrested and about to lose your life. Man, go out in joy. Go out in victory. And Jesus could have stopped it. He could have stopped the murder of, of, of he could have stopped it. He could have stopped the murder of John, but he didn't. This is what he said. He said, don't be offended. Oh my God, don't go out offended. Offended. Somebody write that down. Don't go out offended. Don't go out offended. John, you're going out. You're going out. But don't be offended. Emotional responses are killing our church. Generations don't communicate with each other, not a lot because of emotions. Look at this. Look at this. I love this banana. When I went to counseling, counselor brought out a little puppet doll and put it in her belly and showed me that that little girl in me always wants to rise up and defend me every time I'm going through. My God, that's powerful. What a technique. Woo, somebody don't go out offended. Don't let your age offend you. Don't let, don't let your seasons offend you. Don't get offended. Don't get offended. Whoa, my handy behind that. Don't go out offended. Whoa, Shanda Rababa Katanda. Whoa, I feel God in this place. Don't go out. We come against that spirit now. Ah, don't go out offended. Some of what you are calling grief is not grief. You're offended. You're offended. Don't go out offended. Whoa, Holy Spirit. Don't go out offended. Woo, always talking about what happened to you and your child and that little girl, that little boy. And when you're married now, you got a wife and children. And I see so much promiscuity. Men with, with promiscuousness and, and, and children all over everywhere. That's because they are defending that little boy in them. Because it don't take a man to make a baby. Take a man to raise him. Take a man to train him. Take a man to support him. But it don't take a man to make a baby. Ooh, but out here making all these babies, it's because that inner child is looking for something. We have given the devil inhabitable space. Woo, that word tapas, my God, that word tapas, we have given the devil a foothold. Oh my God, we have given the devil a foothold. And we have not been vigilant about our emotional purity. We have not been vigilant. We have not. We think, okay, because I'm anointed. God is using me. And that's good. But there's a foothold. There's an inhabitable space where the devil lives in your emotions. You have given him a foothold. And so that means that he can come in and out. Whenever he pleases. Yay, Shay. Whoa, shy. Hallelujah. Now watch this. And I love that. But kind of, can I tag that? Can I tag that? Can I tag that right now? She says, Lord, heal us from every childhood trial and stabilize our emotions. Watch this. And I want you to pray it, but I want you to understand you're going to have to do some work. I want you to know you're going to have to do some work with that. Sean, we're going to have to do some work. Yes, we got to pray it. Yes, we put it before the Lord. Listen to me carefully. We're going to have to do the work. And we have the helper to help us. That portal has to be closed. You must close all entrance ways. Entrance and exits to your emotions. 
You must close. Whoa, you must close those portals. You must close those windows, those doors. How do I do that? Here's the scripture. You don't go to bed angry. You don't let the sun go down on your wrath. You don't have to do the work. Can't stay mad longer than bedtime. Somebody put that in the chat. Asia, we cannot allow foothold, the foothold, the inhabitable space, because we have not been vigilant with vigilance, with vigilance. We've not dealt with Holy Spirit in our emotions, our feelings. We have not dealt with that. We have allowed foothold, the tapas. We have allowed inhabitable space in our emotions. So you can't stay mad longer than bedtime. You can't sleep with anger. You can't go to bed. Anger, hurt, emotions, uh, 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 your coping strategies, all of that. Woo, the worst thing you can do is cry yourself to sleep. That's the worst thing you can do. That's the worst thing that you can do. Good God, oh God. Woo, them feelings, those emotions. Listen to me. You cannot sleep with anger. You cannot sleep with anger. You cannot. The worst thing you can do is to go to bed angry. And the worst thing you can do is cry yourself to sleep. That the last meditation that you are cognitive of is about them and about how you feel and about your anger and about your disappointment. And you cry, you cry. Who am I talking to? You cry yourself to sleep. That's the worst thing you can do. You opened up footholds, you opened up portals, and now you are unable to fight because you're asleep. And now you can't stay up long enough to do the warfare that's required. And so you wake up. Ishka. Woo, Shakaba. <laughs> Look at here. She said, Dr. Wilson said, Dr. Wilson Brown said, I went to bed angry one night and woke up with a stiff neck and back. The body, the body. Illnesses, diseases. Let me tell you something about your body. There are certain periods of time while you are asleep that your body cleanses itself. Certain organs, certain systems, your 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 central nervous system, uh, your glandulous endocrine system, uh, certain certain times of the night, your body cleanses itself. It cleanses it, 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 it purifies itself. That's why sleep is, 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 is a gift from God. And I'm telling you now, so many believers, so many believers, we, we can't help you because you got to do the work. You got to do the work, your body, your body, your body reflects unhealed emotions. Your body, sickness, diseases. Your body. There's always a reset. And my God, I'm telling you, some of you don't know why you're constipated. I hear this by the Spirit of God. And, and it's, 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 yes, there's some things you can hydrate. There's some things you can take. But I'm telling you, you are blocked up. And it's not just lack of hydration it's emotions it's 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 unresolved uh uh uh, uh anger is unresolved and, and some of you listen i hear this in the spirit some of you sleep is your go-to when you get angry or when you get hurt or when you get disappointed sleep is your go-to and so you run into the bed and you go to sleep but that's wrong that's the wrong thing to do that's the wrong thing to do. You got to do the work. You can't. Some of you run. I'm in the bed and you see people in the bed, in the bed. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. No, it's the enemy's foothold that's in your life. 
It's the enemy's foothold. Some of you have horrible dreams and nightmares. And it is because of the emotional constipation, the backup, that in your emotions, your soul is damaged. Your soul is not healthy. Your soul is not well. Oh my God, oh my God. And you will be in that pain. Some of you, you use food as a go-to. You use alcohol as a go-to. Some of you use uh, 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 exercise as a go-to. Listen, you have got to find where that foothold is. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Woo, Erica say, oh my God, I didn't know I'm just hearing it by the spirit. Say, I'm going to bed. No, 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 don't do that. Stay up and speak in tongues and say, God, I give all of this back. I call this person's name. I will not take this to bed with me. Disappointment, a reje rejection. I will not take you to bed because this ease is lying at the door. Disease is lying at the door. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? You've got to hear me good. You've got to hear me good by the spirit of the living God. Woo! Shanda Masia. Woo! My God, the devil has been given a foothold an inhabitable space, an inhabitable space, an inhabitable space, an inhabitable space in your spirit, in your emotions, in your soul. You have opened the door. You have given him a foothold. Oh, shatana namasia and this ease and this ease and this ease is the outcome can god use you yes god will use you mightily god can use you mightily but you will tear up as much as you raise up and so some of you get angry she says when i get angry whoa my god i think i can do what i want i throw off restraints I throw off restraint. Woo, Rebaki Ataba. I throw off restraints. I do what I want to do, drink what I want to drink. But my God, at the end of the day, I pay. I pay. Because I have given the devil a foothold. I want y'all to hear this again. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Stop grieving the Holy Ghost. Stop grieving Holy Spirit. What do you think you're going to get from God and you're grieving Holy Spirit? Grieving Holy Spirit. It said, don't break his heart. Oh my God. His Holy Spirit moving and breathing in you. I'm in Ephesians 4 and 30. My God is the most intimate part of you. The most intimate part of your life. I'm reading it from the message. Making you fit for himself. Don't take such a gift for granted. Don't grieve God. Don't break his heart. Whoa, don't grieve, don't grieve, don't grieve. For this precious gift is moving and breathing in you. And it's the most intimate part of your life, making you fit for himself. Let it go. Give it to Holy Spirit. Don't grieve him by being angry all night. Don't grieve him by bitterness and cutting and profane talk. Don't grieve him. He's making you fit for himself. Don't grieve him. And don't take such a gift 
for granted. Paul, you are so right. Riotous living in choices gives the devil a foothold. Oh, make a clean break with all backbiting, with profane talk. Be gentle with one another. Be sensitive with yourself. Be careful with yourself and forgive one another quickly, folks. Oh, forgive when you throw off those restraints, when you give the devil a foothold. You give him a tapas. You give him an inhabitable space. And that is a space where God does not reign, where lordship of Jesus is not in place, folks. Oh my God, the cry of the Lord is that we become inhabited by Holy Spirit, that we be inhabited by Holy Spirit. But when you keep giving the devil a foothold, oh, Shaka, Lore Bamani Osha, Bamani Osi Kababasa, oh, Kababa Mamani Osheka, oh, Rabba Baba Hatta Rabahushke, Renda Rabasa. Can I, can I still be used of God? Yes. Can, can I be a blessing to others? Absolutely but you will tear up as much as you raise up. My God, Holy Spirit, deal with me. Holy Spirit, deal with me. Take what's wrong and show me right. Spirit, deal throughout the night. Holy Spirit, deal with me. I give you authority until all in my life becomes yours. <laughs> yours until all in my life becomes yours. My beloved Bishop, ah, ooh, deal with me, deal with me. Holy Spirit, Deal with me. Don't deal with them. Don't deal with her. Don't deal with him. Holy Spirit, deal with me. Uh, woo, Holy Spirit, deal with me. I give you authority until all, do you hear that word? In my life becomes yours. I want y'all to do this. We got to do this work. This is spiritual formation 101 from a Pentecostal perspective. Holy Spirit, deal with me. I got to go. I love y'all. Share it. Share it on your pages. Like, tag, and share. We'll be back in class tomorrow by the grace of God. I love y'all. Woo, Holy Spirit, deal with me.